Hey everyone, Cycrayasin here, and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to connect the legs to the torso. Now, this is something that was pretty hard for me to figure out, but I think I've got a pretty good working system, uh, so I'm going to show you that. And again, it's just my system, so I don't know if it's that good, but we'll see. So, I'm going to start with just like a stick figure person, okay? And here's a torso, right? So I'm assuming this part you can sort of do because this is, um, I guess, pretty basic. Okay, so we'll start with the torso. And forgive me if I'm doing it a lot in my style. It's gotten to the point that it's almost impossible for me to draw outside of my style at least a bit. I will try to... Uh, make the proportions a bit more uh, normal, but, you know, they're going to be fairly exaggerated. So, here we have the crotch area, and if you recall my other tutorials, um, it's halfway between um, the top of the head to the crotch is equal to the crotch to the bottom of the feet. So. So the prerequisite of this is you need to be able to get this far, you know, with the, the figure, just in a basic stick figure. That's important. Okay, so now the difficult part is this, because you'll see how, for, for instance, places like the knee, right, you have this internal form and you can build things around it, but with this area, it's like, how how does this work, right? So, the way I kind of, I don't know if I solve the puzzle, but what I do is I think of it like this. Like, here you have a pelvis uh, in here, right? And I simplify it to look like this, like a bowl shape. But it's not... A bowl that from the side would look like this as well. So from the front it looks like this. From the side it looks like this. And from the back it would actually look like this. See? So this part right here, this line, um, is at an angle like so. I don't know if it's exactly this angle, but it's at an angle regardless. Um, and so this part here is coming forward. And this is not how the pelvis actually looks. Um, it's a lot more complicated, but this is the way I kind of simplified it. And you have an iliac crest and it comes around and it's like this and it goes around and behind like so. And it goes into the sacrum. But this is really the important part. Just this portion here. It comes out a little bit like this. And um, in the skeleton, I guess, it kind of has like a notch here. So this part right here. And forgive me, this is the first time I'm doing a tutorial in traditional media. You can let me know if you prefer it like this, or um, digital. Uh, I've been having a bit of problem with digital uh, stuff recently um, in terms of recording and sound and stuff, but uh, hopefully I'll get that solved soon. So anyway, this is important. Now, it comes out, I don't know, I, I just guess at it. It's like, it doesn't start right at this point here. It comes out a little, a little bit, and it occupies this. Now, why is this important, this iliac crest area? Well, the reason it's important is because a muscle connects to it called the sartorius. And that comes around from this point. So we have this as the iliac crest point, right? And it goes around behind. From this point, it goes down and it goes down to the knee and it comes around like this. So it goes like this. So this is very important because now we've got at least for me, it, it creates this indication of, okay, you've got a 
something inside that splits stuff. So, okay, now we have the knee on this side and this muscle goes around. Now, the next piece of the puzzle is actually in the crotch. And so, I'm gonna start with uh, a female anatomy and it's because it's easier, because male anatomy is kind of, uh, hmm, uh, complicated by the genitals. <laughs> um, so, if you are, I don't know, uh, I'm not gonna go into detail, but if this is a big deal for you, then I don't know how to teach you uh, leg anatomy and how the leg connects to the crotch if you have issues with it. But basically, let's say we're looking at someone um, from Bill, okay, so let's say you're, you've taken a camera and you've gone underneath someone or someone's just, they've got their legs spread out. Basically, that's it, right? So, um, this is the butt and the legs are coming out forward like this, right? And then you have uh, the genitals here. What it creates is sort of a diamond shape here. So, here would be the butthole, here would be... Um, the pubic mound, and then the reason why it's important to know that is because the next step of the puzzle comes from here, from around this point of this diamond, um, you get a muscle coming around, and that comes and also goes towards the knee here. So here in the front view, you don't get to see it quite like this. You, it, It's just here, right? So then you get this connecting here, and then these two can connect. And what it does is you create this triangle, right? So this triangle is really important because this is really how um, I figure out the legs, like how to, to work the legs. The other thing is at the crotch, um, that's also where the greater trochanter is and that's the bone uh, that comes from the pelvis and it um, simplified it looks like this, like you have the the pelvis let's just simplify it like this okay and then you have this hip bone coming from here and it goes down at an angle to the knee like this so that's what your femur is actually like it's at an angle it's not straight up and down um, and so it comes from here and it goes down here so this is the widest part right here and then it goes down now if you have fat your fat can go below this and that will make this silhouette a bit wider so I'll just do that for this leg, um, and actually what I can do is, through the magic of uh, D.B. Meyer, um, I can uh, create uh, a new layer and make it see-through. And so with the fat, what would happen is, is that visible? Yeah, I think that's visible. So um, you can get more you know, fat in this portion and fat coming around like this and this part of the pelvis, right? Like this part where we had the iliac crest, just above that is the external obliques. Um, so if I draw the rib cage in here roughly and I draw the pelvis here, then between the rib cage and the pelvis, this bowl, are the external obliques. And when you have more uh, weight, more fat on you, um, it tends to round out like this is, this creates the love handles. Um, okay, but you still have this part. So let's do the, so it's just some strange person who got, you know, they lost a lot of weight, I suppose. Um, on this side and they're more fat on this side okay so let's put a dash down the middle and I don't know if you want to go before and after or after and before uh, maybe maybe they put on weight so this is the before and this is the after anyway um, okay so here you've got this coming down and this is the widest part in here you know, it's still there, but it's hidden uh, under some fat. And then you have the knee. And then we have this iliac crest. And let's create that triangle shape that we saw. So 
that triangle shape, just getting a bit more detail. So that triangle shape is going to come from here to this point, and that follows this muscle, the sartorius. Remember, the sartorius connects to this part of the iliac crest, comes down, and then you have this part at the crotch, and then you get this shape here. And for this, we can do the same thing. It comes from here and it comes around and it connects here. And then you get this triangle shape. Okay, so now this is really important because whenever you want to move the leg, let's say we want to lift the leg up. Now I actually just have to turn this off. If we want to lift the leg up, what we can do is now we know the two points. We know this point and this point. So let's just create a character and I usually start with a, a very basic um, shape. If it's a girl, I'll start with an hourglass shape. If it's a guy, um, similar, just a bit more, I don't know. He reminds, it reminds me of like a, a gum, a chewing gum, like the sticks of gum. Um, but anyway, so we start with this. So. Well, let's raise this leg. So what's going to happen? Well, the pelvis itself, it's going to stay the same. So we can start with the pelvis and we can start with the iliac crest. That part's fine. Okay. So now what's going to happen is from here is this part. And also from the side view, let's just do the side view real, real quick. Um, you've got the pelvis and it's at an angle, right? And you've got the iliac crest coming around here. Okay. So this is higher up in the back and this is the butt, and this is the front of the figure. Okay, so we have the rib cage here, and the front of the figure. Now, this point here and this is pretty much the widest or the part that's closest forward, and so you get this here, which is like this part here, all this, is this, okay? I mean, for the most part, because then it goes around and it goes, you know, behind this part of the knee, um, like that, like a snake. Um, but that's really helpful, because now you know, oh, okay, so this part is going to be seen in a side view. And then we get the back of the knee doing this sort of thing, okay? So, okay, so from this, okay, let's raise this leg. So the leg is going to, this part is going to get raised, right? So it's going to be coming like this with this muscle going up. And so let's bring this up. So the way I actually think of it first is where is the knee? Because the knee can determine a lot. Let's say I put the knee here, right? Okay, so the leg is raised, but it's going like this. So this part of the iliac crest is going to create this muscle. It's going to go like this, right? It's this that we're looking at. The sartorius is going to go around to the knee. And then let's fill in this part right here, right? Because that's going around. Now, because the leg is raised like this, you've got the crotch here. And so this part, that, that diamond shape we saw earlier, you know, you get your diamond, you get your butt, and you get your pubic mound here, and then you've got this muscle coming around. So that is going to come up and around to here. So we get this. And then you also have the butt attached behind to this. So um, sometimes you'll see it, especially, let's say, if the legs are... Uh, spread, let's say this guy's leg is coming like this, um, and this leg is going down like this. Well, if it's like this, what you'll see is the butt coming around the back, like so, and uh, inserting in there. Um, so we've got this. So this leg comes around, and then you have, you know, the rest of the leg coming down. And so we've got that triangle shape. And what it's what it looks like from this angle is like this.
right? So I think it's very good to practice this shape, getting this shape. So let's say this leg was now coming, let's say this other knee is forward like this, right? So what's going to happen? Well, you've still got this sartorius coming around, but now it's going to be hidden. Then you have this part of the leg, and you have the butt coming, you have the butt here, and then you have this part coming down, right? So you'd get something that looks like that. And we don't see that, that triangle thing here this time. Um, but even without it, it seems like just knowing where this attaches to is a big help. Um, at least it was for me. So, I guess, like, that's the big thing. Um, let me just clarify this because it was a bit hard to see. So the knee comes down. We've got the leg coming around like this. And you've got this muscle. Um, now something about the legs that's uh, important. I don't know if I've mentioned it before. I think I probably have. Um, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I have. Is, uh, but I just want to reiterate it. It's the way the muscles of the calf go. And it's like this. Okay, so with the top part of the leg, it's widest here, right? Near the greater trochanter usually. Even if it's a bit fat, it's just going to be below that. But it's wide here, and then it gets wide here, right, near the knee. And then it gets wide here, and then it gets wide here, and it comes down. So you're getting, like, this interchanging width where if we just drew a straight line up and down, it's like, yeah, the leg is basically following this straight, it's within this rectangle mostly, um, but you've got areas coming out like this, and then it goes in like that, and then it goes like that, and it goes like that. So it creates this rhythm, this very elegant S-curve rhythm. And usually these rhythms are what make things look elegant. It's having these type of curving rhythms, they're very pleasing to look at. But if I just uh, simplified it without this difference in height, see like this is higher and then this is lower and then this is lower and then this is lower. If I didn't do that, I'd get this type of sausage effect where you have the leg and it's sort of like this and then you get the knee and then you get this part coming down and I don't know, to me this is very unappealing. It just, it doesn't have nearly as much um, rhythm as this going like this, this, this. And not to mention the ankles also are at different angles. This ankle is higher than this ankle. So, this one is higher. And this is lower. And then the outside part is higher than the inside, so this part's lower, and then this part's lower, and this part's higher. Okay, so what else can we do? Um, let's say the back view then, because this is basically all you need to know. You get this part and this. Uh, is going towards that diamond thing, which is here. So we can create that. And Sartorius is coming around here. And so we have this area. And then you can also think of it like planes. Like this is coming like this, right? And this, if we, we do like, uh, I don't know, contour lines. This is coming like this, and then this is going underneath like that. Right? So that's helpful as well, is to create these type of uh, lines to indicate how the form is turning. Um, okay, so from the back, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm just creating a quick hourglass shape. 
And okay, so now we've got the greater trochanter at the uh, as the widest part, right? And we've got the pelvis. And remember, the pelvis is going to take on this shape uh, from the back. It's not like in the front, it's like this. In the back, it's like this. But you still have to imagine it's tilted forward. So you don't see this forward part, but you still try to imagine it, OK? So then let's start with the same silhouette. You know, you've got the legs coming down. And you've got the calf inserting into the knee kind of like this, where you've got the calf here, and then you get the knee coming around like this, and you get this kind of hollow. And if I was to shade it, it would look something like this. I don't know if that makes sense, but... It's this part where, from a side view, you get the butt, you get the leg coming down, you get it coming out like this, you get the knee, and it comes down. So we're looking at this part here, is right here, the pit of the knee. So now, the important thing is, okay, so you have the pelvis going around, you get your sacrum, and now the, the iliac crest goes all the way around, like it goes like this, and use red comes like this and it comes around the back like that. So from the back view, it's more like this. And then you have your sacrum or sacrum here. I guess it would be sacrum, but anyway, have that coming around like that. Okay, kind of looks like a bullhorn. Um, so then this sort of points into the butt crack and then you've got the butt going down like so. See? So in the front, you don't really see the butt cheeks um, coming around too much. If I spread my, if I move this leg and pushed it this way, for instance, then you would see more of that butt cheek from the front. Um, but if not, you don't really see that much. And I don't know, I find the back views not that difficult uh, compared to the front views because it's just, I don't know, that's it. You know, you've got this shape of the butt cheek. So let's say we've got a figure and their leg is out. Well, okay, so their butt's going to, their butt cheek's going to go like that. And this, and remember about um, tension, right? So this butt, like one leg has to be supporting the, the weight. And if this leg is going out, um, I'm going to put more of the support on this, so there's going to be more weight on this butt cheek. Okay, so something like this. And then you've got your ribs going back here. You've got this iliac crest here and the external obliques. So this is basically how I think of it, the, the legs. And um, if you've got any raised leg positions, um, let's say the person's legs are up in the air like this. So their calf is here. Maybe their shoulder is here and they're supporting themselves. And then this kind of position and you're seeing underneath, well, you get the butt going around and where the butthole would be and then you have the simplified diamond form for uh, their genital region and then you have this muscle coming around towards the leg and so you get this kind of shape happening and then we see um, underneath the calf muscle So we get this kind of shape. All right, so that's my tutorial on how the leg connects to the torso. 
and I hope it helps and thanks for watching.